Amen. All right, here in Proverbs chapter number 20, I derive the title of the sermon from verse number 13, where the Bible says, Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. The title of the sermon this evening is Love Not Sleep. And I know some of the other men and I have been speaking about this recently. And anyone who knows me very well, especially my wife, knows that I am 90% of the time I am deficient in the amount of sleep that I need. So this is something that I, and, and this has been this way probably since, since high school for me personally. And I didn't really understand and know, you know that, there, that there are a lot of strong teachings in the Bible about not loving sleep. And we live in a very slothful and sluggardly society. A society that really, in a lot of ways, glorifies sleep. A society that makes jokes about people sleeping all the time. And how many people do you know personally that will talk about and make statements like, I have to have my sleep, or I love my sleep? You hear this constantly. And the United States of America is a very sluggardly, slothful society. It truly is. The obesity rates are through the roof in the United States. Why is that? You know, why is that? Because it's a very, if you compare us to other cultures, we're lazy. Right. There's no way around it. The people in the United States are lazy. It's true. You have obesity, high rates, and you have the, all these people in the United States who just glorify sleep. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The opposite of the person that, you know, uh, in this case, like we see in this verse, a person that doesn't love sleep is? The person that would be a person that loves sleep, and what is it? It's a slothful, lazy person. Look at what it says one more time. Look at verse number 13. <laughs> love not sleep. Lest thou come to poverty. And then he says, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. So he's saying, if you don't love sleep, what are you going to do? You're going to work and provide bread for yourself. The opposite of a, a, the, types of, the type of person that loves sleep, if throughout the Bible we're going to look at this, is a lazy person. A slothful, slugger person. A Christian should not love sleep. And that may be a weird concept to you, but that's a biblical concept. A lot of times when you hear something... From the Bible, the very first time, you've never heard it before, it may sound odd, but that's that's the truth. Right. Love not sleep is the title of the sermon. You should not love sleep. Yeah. I want you to turn to your Bible in John chapter number 11, verse number 12. I want to preface the sermon at the very beginning on that there is, of course, the necessity of sleep. You must have sleep. I want to look at a particular time in which you need more sleep. Of course, when, you, when a person is sick, at that time, they are more in need of sleep to rejuvenate their body, to revive their body. The rest is good for them. I want you to look here in uh, John chapter number 11. Look at verse number 11. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Now the disciples at this time think he, he's literally sleeping, just taking a nap. It actually tells you that. Uh, but it said, Then said his disciples, Lord... If he sleep, he shall do well. Because they knew that he was sick. When you are sick, it is good for you. I want to. I want. I wanted to make sure that I preface that so people just don't start like never sleeping. And I'm, like I gave uh, advice. I'm not a doctor, right? But if you are, of course, if you're sick, you want to know the good, one of the good things to help you get better is to get sleep. It helps you rejuvenate your body. It helps you just recover and hit a reset button on your body. It will help you, you know, to get back to normal is what it will do. You need rest when you are sick. So here's the thing. You're not supposed to love sleep, but that also doesn't mean that it's not a necessity. Of course, it's a necessity. You must have sleep, but we should not love sleep. I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 7. Actually, go to Proverbs 3.21. We'll skip that. Go, to, go back to Proverbs chapter number 3. Verse number 21. Now, the book of Proverbs is a book that is written to give you wisdom. And one of the things that it talks about a lot is not loving sleep. Another thing that it speaks about repeatedly is not being lazy, not being slothful, not being a sluggard. The people that you know that are lazy just in life, that don't want to work, are the same people I know in my personal experience that sleep a lot. Right. That enjoy sleeping, that enjoy sitting around, they enjoy just laying around. They're, it's because they're one and the same, my friend. Why do they like to sleep? Because it's another form of rest. It's the, it's the, you know, sitting down and laying down, that's the next best, best thing to sleeping, isn't it? That's why they enjoy it so much. Lazy people like to sleep. Look at Proverbs chapter number 3. Look at verse number 21. Proverbs chapter number 3, verse number 21. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. 
Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. And then he says this, yea, thou shalt lie down. And then he says this, this is interesting, and thy sleep shall be sweet. We're going to look at another person that gets sweet sleep. But if you notice what it's talking about, it's talking about a person that lives a righteous life. You want to know a way to get good sleep in your life? You want to know a way that you can have, you know, get the, what is it, the REM sleep? That's like the deep sleep where you're really, you know, you're getting full rest when you're sleeping? Live a righteous life. I bet these people that do all these, these, these different uh, sleep studies, they don't take one person that lives a righteous life and compare it under another guy who's just living a sinful life. They don't, they don't equate that into, or they don't put that into the equation, do they? But that's something the Bible teaches. You know how, you know how you're going to live, you know how you're going to have good sleep at night? Is that you walk in God's commandments. You know why? Because great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. You get peace, great peace. You can lay down at night knowing that you're living your life right every day. You don't have you know, a guilty conscience when you go to sleep at night. Every night when you lay down, you know that you've done your best. You know that you've done what you should do, and you don't have a conscience... You know, uh, that, that's harmed or damaged towards God. So that's, that's a major point, you know, on getting good sleep at night. That person's sleep would be sweet if you live a righteous life. I want to look at another example. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. I want you to look at verse number 12. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 12 reads, The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. And it says, Whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. So that's interesting. You actually get a couple of things from this verse. But the main thing that I want to focus on is the first statement that it makes. It says, The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Amen. A, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. I can tell you for sure that the best night's sleep that I've ever had in my life are the nights, of course, where I just spent, you know, all day just doing very hard labor, extremely hard labor. I remember when I used to play basketball at the time growing up, and I would just all day spend, you know, like extreme workouts right when we, the beginning of the season had started. We're running suicides and stuff like that. I remember that those nights... Those nights I slept sweet. Just because you're exhausting your body. And your body needs that rejuvenation. When you lay down at night, you're going to get sweet sleep. So that's why it's important to, if you want to get a good night's sleep, if you want to, when you actually fall asleep, to be able to revive your body, revive your mind, and feel refreshed in the morning, make sure that you work hard the day prior. Make sure that you work hard, that you actually give it all that you have whenever you're doing. You know, the Bible talks about anything that you find to do, do it with all your might. You should be doing that anyways. Amen. You should be glorifying God in all the work that you do as a Christian. And as a bonus, when you go to sleep at night, you're going to get sweet sleep. Nobody wants to have bad sleep, right? Everybody, when you wake up in the morning, you know when you had a bad night's sleep, right? I'm sure you wake up in the morning, you can tell whether you slept well or whether you didn't sleep well. And you know, the, one of the main factors is laboring. So living a righteous life, number one, that's going to help you sleep at night. You're going to have a peaceful mind when you lay your head down on the pillow at night. Number one. Number two, work hard, labor, exhaust your body, give it all that you got. Then once you go down to lay down, you really need that rest. Your body is waiting for that rest. It's actually needful. You lay down at night, you're going to sleep. It's going to be sweet sleep. You have this example with Jesus. Jesus is just constantly working. Super hard worker. And you know what? They get on a ship and there's like this severe storm going on. You know where Jesus is? He's sleeping. How is he able to sleep through this severe storm? Because he's so worn out. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Jesus, that's, that, the, the sleep that Jesus was receiving was sweet. You know, he enjoyed that sleep because he was worn out from all the work that he was constantly doing. Just constantly. When you read right when that happens... He's, he's just going back and forth, and they're going out and traveling. When you look that exact passage up in the Bible, that's a part where specifically it talks about them traveling a lot, like from place to place to place to place. They're not only going out and preaching the gospel all day. They're traveling on foot to every location that they're going. And that's another point as far as the, the amount of labor that you do daily is a lot less than what people did in the, in the past in history. Because part of their day was walking or traveling, physically exerting themselves to get to the job site that day. Part of their day to come to church was traveling two miles horseback. And that's 
almost as bad as walking when you're, you know, jerking around, going up a mountain and stuff like that. Or, or some people were walking. A lot of people haven't had horses or any sort of transportation mobility of that sort, right? So we have it so much easier today. It's so much easier to be lazy today. It, you know, that's why we need to be even more on our toes. And Christians should not be lazy. Christians should not love sleep. I want you to go to another passage. Let's look at this where the slothful man is spoken of as loving sleep or, or being a person that sleeps constantly. Go to Proverbs chapter number 6. Proverbs chapter number 6. If you were wise, we look in the Proverbs where we receive wisdom. And if you were a wise man, you would understand that loving sleep, that that is something that you don't want to do as a Christian. That's, that's not going to lead you down the path of wisdom. It's not going to give you a successful, blessed life. Proverbs chapter number 6, look at verse number 4. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. And then verse number 5, we're going to read through a few verses here. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Watch this. Go to the ant, thou slugger. So the lazy person, two verses earlier, what did it say? Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. So what does he like to do? He's, like, he's sleeping way too much. God's not saying never sleep. He's talking about a person that just sleeps entirely too much is what it is. Uh, pick up reading there again. So go, uh, verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food. And the harvest. Look at that. So that was smack dab in the middle of the first verse we read, and then this. Look at verse 9. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? So notice, it's not that they are sleeping at all. Of course not. It's that they're sleeping entirely too long. They're sleeping to, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever it may be. I remember when I was installing cable, you know, all the time. You'll come to people's houses sometimes. They're just like these teenagers or whatever they'll be, and they're sleeping at 1 o'clock. It's like, what are you doing with your life? I mean, you are, th and that is just the epitome of, how do you look at people like that? You're a loser, don't you, when you come in? What are you doing? You're getting nothing done. They're staying up late at, at, at hours and times when there's nothing profitable to be done most of the time. Normally, why people stay up late is because they're getting in trouble the majority of the time. And then they sleep in late. That's most of the time. So notice what it says again. Look at it. Verse 10. Uh, Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. And then he says, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. So a person that's traveling, he's not staying there and doing his work. Traveleth. And he says, and thy want as an armed man. I want you to go over and look at another one. Proverbs chapter number 19, verse number 15. So we see there that, that uh, the slothful man... The lazy man was one that loves sleep. He loves to just sleep all the time. Proverbs chapter number 19, verse number 15. Proverbs chapter number 19, verse number 15. It says, Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Notice again the connection with the person that's slothful and sleeping, and then what else? They don't have anything to eat. They're not providing for themselves. A lot of people that you know that are successful, that maybe like, uh, you know, they had a specific goal of starting a business, whatever they've done. I guarantee if you go and speak to those people, because I know from personal experience of people that I know that have done these types of things. If you go and speak to those particular people, they'll tell you that there were times, that there were months, that there were years where they went through where they really had to sacrifice a lot of sleep. You, you know, you only, we only have a certain amount of hours, a certain amount of time in this life. And you got to decide where you're going to put that time, whether it's going to be sleeping, whether you're going to get eight hours, nine hours, or seven hours, and then you can take those two hours and be profitable with them instead. So you could, well, am I going to sleep eight hours tonight? Am I going to sleep nine hours tonight? Or am I going to sacrifice these few hours so I can get a little bit more done? And that's really what it comes down to. You know, the Bible will, will speak of when there's things that are, you know, that, that need to be done, when there's work that needs to be done. You, sometimes you need to sacrifice sleep. And people don't like hearing that. When Jesus and the disciples are going around, what's the reason why he's not sleeping constantly? What's the reason why he's not getting any sleep done? Because there's work that needs to be done. Because there are things that need to be done. Why is, he, why is he not getting a full night's sleep? Why are there times when people will stay up all night? Because there's something that needs to be done. 
I want you to turn. Let's look at a couple of, of uh, times where people are sacrificing sleep. I'm going to read you. Go to Luke chapter number 6. I'm going to read you here from Proverbs a couple of other verses. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 5. Proverbs chapter number 10, verse number 5. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Notice, the person that's sleeping is lazy. He's not working. The person that's working is obviously not sleeping, while the other one is sleeping. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 24, verse number 33. You don't have to turn that. I'm going to read it to you. 24, 33, it says, Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of, thy, of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and I want as an armed man. So it's the same phrase that we read before. It's just found elsewhere. So you're in Luke chapter number 6. <clears throat> Luke chapter number 6. I'm going to give you an example of some people in the Bible, like I was just speaking about, where they sacrifice sleep in order to get work done. And that needs to happen from time to time. Luke chapter number 6, verse number 12. <clears throat> Luke chapter number 6, verse number 12 the Bible says, and it came to pass in those days that he went out, this is Jesus, into a mountain to pray. And watch what it says. And continued all night in prayer to God. Do you see that? Jesus went out in a mountain. He went out, it says, in a mountain to pray. And it says that he continued all night in prayer to God. The entire night. Can you imagine getting down on your hands and knees or even standing up? just praying for 12, 13 hours. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the discipline that it took? Not only just to stand there for that amount of time, but also just staying awake for that amount of time. Throughout the night, the middle of the night, when your body is used to getting sleep at that, at that particular time. So notice he continued all night in prayer to God. He felt that it was needful for him to stay up and pray during this time. It was needful for that. I want you to look at verse number 13, though. Keep reading. Watch what happens. And when it was day... He went to sleep. Is that what it says? No. No, the, the sun comes up. Watch this. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples. And of them he chose twelve, whom also his name. He named apostles. Simon, whom he also called, uh, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Zelotes. And Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. Watch this. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And look at this. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were hit, healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went virtue out of him and he and healed them all. And then it says this. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said... Blessed be ye poor. Did anybody know what this particular sermon is? It's the Sermon on the Mount. Did you know that Jesus Christ preached the Sermon on the Mount immediately after a night where he got zero sleep? Where he stayed up the entire night before. Probably the greatest sermon. It's for sure the most popular sermon that Jesus Christ ever preached. The Beatitudes is this particular part of the Sermon on the Mount. The greatest sermon considered the greatest sermon of all Christians that Jesus Christ ever preached, he preached after he stayed up the entire night with no night's sleep. Amen. He went and he, and, he, and he ordained his apostles, and then he went out and he was healing people. And then he stands up and he preaches the greatest sermon that he ever preached probably while he was on earth. While he literally stayed up, he pulled an all-nighter. He pulled an all-nighter and he didn't sleep at all the night before. You know what that is? That's, he, he's a hard worker is what it is. He knew that there was work to be done. There were people that needed him, people that needed to be healed. There were people that needed to hear the gospel, people that needed to hear this message, right? There are people that needed to be helped. And that's sometimes you have to sacrifice your sleep in order to do things. Obviously, things that are spiritual, but in any way, if you have work to do, like we had to, and it's spiritual in some sense, we had to fix this church, right? And one night, Brother Hall and I stayed here until what time is it? 5 30 in the morning. And man, was I tired. But you know what? We had to get the work done. We stayed here many times. Like, I, I was getting, I, it was getting to the point where I could tell people were kind of getting wore out. When I was getting people to come, I know everybody was getting super tired. But we had to get the church ready, didn't we? We had work that we had to get done. So you know what you had to do? You had to sacrifice sleep for that period of time because we had to have the church ready. 
when things have to get done, sometimes you have to just set things aside. You know what? If you already didn't love sleep, it wouldn't bother you that much. Think about that. Amen. Obviously, there's always the flesh that's going to desire that sleep, isn't there? That makes you just, you get tired. Naturally, you do. Jesus had that same flesh. The same flesh. You know what he did? He walked after the Spirit all the time. Obviously, we can't do that, but we should strive to do that. We should strive to walk in the Spirit. If, if it was not possible for you to love, not sleep, then there would not be a commandment telling you to love, not sleep. Right. You, should, you should strive in your life to not love sleep. You should not love sleep. You know, the, 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 the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. The man that, that, that stays up and he works hard, but that even, even though that, that sleep is enjoyable, that doesn't mean you have to love it. You can even look forward to that. But then, when it's talking about loving it, it's talking about a person that is just engrossed in that. Where he's just sleeping and we're at the point where he's not working. Right? He, it, it's contrast with a man that's just not even doing any work. I want you to look at another example where you know, it speaks of people where, where there's a time to sacrifice sleep. Go to Matthew chapter number 26. Matthew chapter number 26. Matthew chapter number 26. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 26. Look at uh, verse number 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here, and he says this, and watch with me. So there's a job that needs to be done during this time, isn't there? There's something that he wants them to do. He says, and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And then it says, And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. He said, And saith unto Peter, What, could ye not watch with me one hour? So he left for about an hour, it says, and then he comes back. We see that his disciples during this time are sleeping. And watch and pray, look at this, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'll tell you a good point of, of uh, you know, the practice, if you will, of when you're tired, just keeping yourself awake, is that it develops discipline. Because one of the greatest urges that you have naturally, some of the greatest urges are hunger is one, right? When you get very hungry, it's, a, it's just a strong urge that we naturally have as human beings that we really desire food. When you haven't eaten for a long time and there's food set in front of you, I mean, it's a strong urge, isn't it, to eat? Another one is to fall asleep. The longer you stay awake, the more that you desire that sleep. But you know there's a form of fasting, right? Of, of, of fasting from different foods. There's times where people fast from, uh, from drink in the Bible for a period of time, right? But there's also, I believe, Jesus staying up all night would be a good example of him fasting from prayer. And I believe this is a big part of what's, or, I'm sorry, fasting from sleep. And I believe this is a big part of what's going on right now when he's telling them to watch and pray. He's saying that the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. What is he speaking about? He's talking about your flesh wanting to go to sleep at this time. That's what he's saying. And their, your spirit in me is willing to stay up with me and to pray. And if they were to pray, what would they pray? And a good example of that would be how, uh, you know, the, 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 the Lord's Prayer. What is the purpose of prayer in this case? It's to not enter into temptation. So in tandem with that, it's going to help you to not to be more disciplined. Praying to God to help you not enter into temptation. But you're also putting your body into subjection. Just in the same way that you de develop discipline by abstaining from food for a period of time, you can develop discipline, self-discipline by abstaining from sleep for a period of time. Of course, not to just torture yourself, right? But to grow spiritually and to, and to just de develop discipline as a Christian. Go to Luke chapter number 9. Let's look at another example. Luke chapter number 9. Look at Luke chapter number 9. Look at verse number 29. 28, look at verse 28 actually. And it came to pass about an, eight, about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white, as, white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men which were Moses and Elias, 
who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. So you may not have noticed, but there's a very similar situation that happens here at the time at the Mount of Transfiguration of what takes place in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he has Peter and James. Is it all three of them? Peter and James and John? Where are they mentioned again? But it just says that Peter and they that were with him. I think it's James and John is spoken of later on in another. It's in verse 28. Oh, it's verse 28. Yeah, it is Peter and James and John. Yeah, are all three with them. So he has all three of them with them. And there's a similar situation. And do you know why they're so tired all the time when they get a break? It's because they're not sleeping much in the first place. Why? Because there's work to be done. There's work to be done. Look at uh, Acts chapter number 20. See, I want you to see that this is a habit that Christians have throughout the New Testament. Look at Acts chapter number 20, verse number 7. Acts chapter number 20. Verse number 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. So 12 o'clock. I mean, this is late, real late, until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third law and was taken up dead. That reminds me of, is he sleeping right now? Daniel, how he was sleeping last week when he was like sunk down into a deep sleep, the way that he was laying, right? That's what it's talking about. Because if you fall asleep, you know, you'll, you'll kind of like curl up into a ball like that. Your body just goes limp. It says in uh, verse number uh, 10, And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves for his life. Is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten. So this is after he's preaching during midnight. This Eutychus falls he go, uh, and, and dies. He goes down and the boy is revived. He comes back to life. Then they break bread, right? Follow what's going on here. It says, and talked a long while, even till break of day. That's saying when the sun came up. And then it says this. So he departed. And then it says, and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. So you know what happened? They had church. And maybe they started at 7. I don't know what time they started. But Paul preached for hours. I mean, he's just going on and on and on. I wonder what he's thinking, preaching about, man. But he's just preaching and preaching and preaching until midnight. And a child falls asleep. And he's in a deep sleep. You know, he's, pre he's probably asleep for a while, a couple of hours. And then he falls and dies from the fall, from a, from a great loft up high. Paul goes and heals this young boy. He comes back to life. Then they're like, I'm hungry. It's like 2 in the morning. They go and break bread and fellowship and, and talk until the sun comes up in the morning. And then he's like, okay, i got to go to another town and leave. He doesn't lay down. He doesn't go to sleep. And you know what you see Paul doing? You see him being very similar to Jesus when you read throughout the book of Acts, where he's just constantly working. He's the exact opposite of a lazy person. You know what? That type of person doesn't love sleep. That type of person doesn't have this just great love for sleep. And that's what we need to develop is an attitude. And you know, I'll tell you what will get it is a great passion or zeal for God. A great, you know, when you read Paul's writings, you read, you know, uh, Paul speaking about preaching the gospel, you can tell that he loves people and he wants people to be saved. And he has a great zeal to do that which would please God repeatedly. You know, he talks about how he just wants to attain unto that perfect man. He wants to just excel and he wants to please God. He's always talking about that. The book of Philippians, he goes on and on about that. We read about it in 1 Corinthians 9 today. How he's running and he wants to obtain, right? He wants to obtain that crown. You can tell that he loves God. You know what's going, to, what's going to push you to be able to stay up later, to be able to do more work? is having a new passion or a new zeal. And I know in my life personally, the times when I'm able to just uh, refrain from a lot of sleep for a period of time is always when I'm real excited about something. Has anyone ever experienced yeah. that? When you have a new zeal, you know, you just, you know, maybe you kind of for a while kind of fell into a slump. And then you just have this new zeal about reading your Bible. And then you're just real excited to wake up early and start reading your Bible. Maybe you're memorizing scripture. And I know that I can just go without sleep. I mean, I can sleep three or four hours and wake up and be fine and just be real excited. Because I have that zeal on the 
inside that's pushing me. Right. You know, it's kind of like when Jesus talked about it. They're like, has he, has he had any food? And, you know, who gave him meat? He's like, my meat is to do the will of my Father. It's, it's the same thing about sleep. Yeah. You know, you could substitute that with your passion, with your zeal, whatever you may be doing, whatever it may. You know, and, and you know what? It should be something spiritual. But a lot of times you'll see people that just are really invested in their business. And they're just, that's their zeal. That's their passion. Whatever it may be. Which is worldly, of course, to have that much passion for something like that. But they can thrive on no sleep like that. You know that? You've seen people like that? I've, I've seen many people like that. I'll tell you, Lester Roloff. I've heard from a person that worked for Lester Roloff for about six, seven years. Said that Lester Roloff slept on average like three or four hours a night every night. He didn't, like, catch up on his sleep. He slept three or four hours every night throughout the week. They would go in there at 2 in the morning, and he'd be sitting at his desk with his glasses on reading. He'd go to sleep, and they'd wake back up at, like, 5.30, 6 in the morning to start preparing the breakfast for the young man, getting all the stuff ready so they can go out there and start working. You know why? Because he's a very zealous, passionate man for God. Because he had a heart to serve God. He was very excited about the things of God. And that was his meat. That was his sleep. That's what compelled him to get up in the morning. That's why he was excited to get up the next day. You know, he wasn't dreading getting up in the morning. He wanted to get up and he wanted to go and do some more work for God is what he wanted to do. He wanted to use all the time that he had to work for God. If you were to, you know, just knock one hour of sleep just off of a year, two years, you know how much more time you have to be productive? Just one hour a night of sleep off every night. That's, there's so much more time just in that one hour that you would have a day to be more productive. I want to look at the Old Testament here. Go to Genesis chapter number 31. Genesis chapter number 31. Verse number 40. Genesis chapter number 31. We'll see an example of this again. Uh, this is speaking of Jacob when he's working. Go back to verse number 36. And Jacob was wroth and chode with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin? That thou hast so hotly pursued after me. Whereas thou hast searched all my stuff, but what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it here before my brethren and thy, uh, before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us and us both. This twenty years have I been with thee, thy ewes and thy, and thy she-goats, she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee, I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. So he's speaking about when he worked for Laban. Now watch what he says next. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me. And then he says, and the frost by night. And then he says, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. So we can see Jacob, while he was working and laboring for Laban, he said that there was many nights when sleep departed from his eyes because he was working during that period of time. I want you to look at uh, look at a couple of verses here. We're going we're gonna to end the sermon, but go to Psalm chapter number 42, verse number 8. Psalm chapter number 42, verse number 8. Look at a couple of verses here about David when he's speaking about being up throughout the night. Psalm chapter number 42, verse number 8. Psalm chapter 42, verse number 8, David says, Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me in my prayer unto the God of my life. Go to Psalm chapter number 77, verse number 6. Psalm chapter number 77, verse number 6. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart and my spirit. Made diligent search. Go to 63, 6. So you see here him, him talking about praising God in the night, during the night. He's staying up, reading his Bible, if you will, in the night. Staying up, praying to God in the night. Just like Jesus stayed up all night, it said. I don't know if David's staying up all night, but he's staying up during the nighttime. And he's, and he's uh, praying to God. And the two times there it says that he's singing to God. Look at verse uh, 6, chapter 63, verse 6. He says this. When I remember thee upon my bed, and watch, the, watch this, and meditate on thee in the night watches. So here we can see he's up for, you know, measure time and watches for multiple hours. He's up multiple hours meditating upon God's word, meditating upon the Lord 
himself. I want to look at one other concept really quick. We're only going to look at a few of these. I have quite a few verses, but I want to look at a few of these. And it's uh, the idea of waking up early, the importance of getting up early in the morning. Go to Genesis chapter number 19, verse number 2. Genesis chapter number 19, verse number 2. You'll see that this is a biblical concept of, as well. People waking up early. Look at Genesis chapter number 19, verse number 2. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So this is, of course, Lot speaking of the angels, and, and just the default is, just stay all night, and then you can rise up early. Just showing that that was the mindset that Lot had. That if you're going to stay here tonight, you know, you can just stay here tonight. It's not a big deal. Then you'll rise up early. Go to Gen uh, Exodus chapter number 8, verse number 20. Exodus chapter number 8, verse number 20. It shows you their habits and the way in which, you know, they live their lives. And it was just usual or common for someone to rise up early is the point. Look at Exodus chapter number 8, verse number 20. This is actually the Lord speaking to Moses. This is even more profound. It says in Exodus chapter number 8, verse number 20, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning. Now, does that sound like a suggestion to Moses, or does that sound like a command? So what do you think God wants you know, for us in our lives? He's just telling Moses. This is just something that he wanted Moses to do. But notice a part of the command is, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. I'm going to show you that he does this a few different times. Go to Exodus 9, chapter 9, verse 13. So this is a different time when he goes and stands before Pharaoh. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Notice when, when God has work for Moses to do, he doesn't want him to sleep in until 11 o'clock. He doesn't want him to stay at his house for a while and wait until the afternoon and then go. When you have a job, what do you do? You rise up early in the morning. That's how we should be as Christians. We should not love sleep and just wake up. You know, that's what that verse is talking about. It says a little folding of the hands to sleep, right? And, you know, there, there's the verse in the Bible also where it talks about how, how the, uh, the slothful man, he turns back and forth on his bed, just like how a door on its hinges just goes back and forth. That's what you begin to become when you just lay in bed in the morning and you just can't get out of bed. You're just rolling back and forth. It's not even good sleep. But a person that just loves their sleep, they're just obsessed with sleeping, that's what they'll do. They're not even enjoying that sleep. They're waking up every few minutes because your body's not even used to doing that. You've been in bed for too long. It's not even good for you to sleep that much. A lazy person is a person that just wants to sleep. In. You know what's interesting to me? Another thing is, is Abraham. When Abraham is commanded to take Isaac and sacrifice Isaac, you see the obedience of Abraham. I mentioned this last night. One thing that I always found very interesting is, you know, he comes to him and tells him to sacrifice, he says, you know, thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest, right? He's talking about Isaac. You know what it says that he does the next day? It says that he rises up early in the morning. And he's having to do this hard, just, you know, I mean, that's horrible. That's horrific. I mean, I can't imagine too many things worse than that, right? Having to take your only son whom you love. You know what else he does? You know what he does even still? Nevertheless, he gets up. And he gets up early in the morning. As soon as the sun comes up. God provided that life for us to do work. The Bible, Jesus talked about you know, those that, that, that no man can work in the dark. That we're supposed to work during the day. We're supposed to labor during the day. So once that sun comes up, it's time to get up. It's time to get up and go to work. When, Moses, when God had a job for Moses, he sent Moses. He didn't just say, hey, go tomorrow. He said, rise up early in the morning and go do my work. Right? Last passage we're going to turn to is Psalm chapter number 132, verse 1. Psalm chapter number 132, verse 1. Psalm chapter number 132, verse 1. The main thing that we should sacrifice our sleep for is for the Lord. It's for spiritual things. Amen. For reading our Bibles, for memorizing Scripture, it's for having more time that we can invest in our spirituality as far as doing things for God, doing things for Christ. Look at what David says here in Psalm chapter number 132. We're going to begin reading the beginning of the chapter. Just look at verse 1. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore unto the Lord and vowed 
unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. Watch what he says. I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to mine eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord and a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Now here, of course, in context, he's talking about finding somewhere you know, where he's going to uh, place the Ark of the Covenant. He's fi talking about finding somewhere where they're going to set up the temple and things like that. But notice that he vows a vow he talks about here. And he says, you know, until I, until I do this for God, I have a job that I'm going to do for God, and I vow until I complete this. I've, you know, I've promised that I'm not going to go to my bed. I'm not going to go to my tabernacle. I'm not going to allow my eyes to have sleep. Why? Because there's spiritual work that needs to be done. There's things that need to be done. You know, you know if, if we're going to sacrifice sleep for anything, you know, I have to sacrifice sleep from time to time for my job, right? But you know what we should really, the major thing that we should be sacrificing sleep for is staying up a few hours and reading your Bible one night a week. Amen. Just, just becoming zealous where, hey, I love the Word of God and I just want to read the Bible tonight. And I'm just going to stay up a couple hours. You know what? I'm still going to get up the same time tomorrow for work. But I just feel like reading my Bible tonight. You know what? I'm going to stay out soul a little bit longer. And that may cause me to not be able to get as much sleep. You know what? I'm still going to rise up early in the morning. You know, some people like to read their Bible early in the morning. And if you do that, you know, praise God. You know, I read mine later in the afternoon just because I'm more alert. I'm more awake. I feel like I get more out of it. When I get home, the first thing I do is read my Bible. But you know what? If you want to rise up early in the morning and read your Bible, amen. Sacrifice some sleep from time to time. Put your body into subjection. Amen. Tell your body who's boss, like Paul talks about, right? There's work to be done. We only have so much time in this life. And you know, you're going to be 50, 60, 70 years old, and your life's going to be gone. And you're going to wish... That you didn't, you know, a lot of people that, if you think about the amount of time that, that people that do sleep a lot... They are, they are almost literally sleeping their life away. Right. They're spending their life asleep. That is a shameful, that's a scary thing. Get to 60, 70 years old and you basically didn't even live life. You know? I'm, I, I want to spend my life, I want to, number one, I want to, like the title of the sermon, I want to get to the point where I just don't love sleep. I could care less about my sleep, right? It's hard, of course, there's a part of you naturally that just desires sleep. I want to get to the point where I don't love sleep. Every Christian should get to the point where they don't love sleep. You know what they should do? From time to time, you should find work to be done for the Lord, where you say, I'm going to sacrifice some sleep tonight for the Lord. I'm going to stay up a little bit later. This isn't a game. The Christian life is not a game. Okay? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to stay up all night and pray. You know, there's nothing different today. People think that we're just playing church in the United States of America. Right. People think that this is just a joke. Why don't you just choose one night to just stay up and pray all night? Is that that crazy? Is that that crazy? It shouldn't be. If it is, if, if when I say that, if you think you're insane, you're a sorry, lazy Christian is what right. you are. Right. Seriously. Jesus comes and set this example and does all these great things for us. Just let him do it. That's pathetic. You know, it's because people have this lazy, stinking attitude. Really. Everybody in the United States of America, all these Christians are so stinking lazy. Amen. They really are. Right. It's frustrating. When people don't want to do work, people don't want to... All, you know, all these churches across the United States, all these Baptist churches, half of them aren't even going soul winning. Right. You think they're staying up at night and reading their Bible? It's pathetic. It really is. Amen. You know, and it's frustrating when you try to say things like this that are biblical. You shouldn't love sleep. Sacrifice some time for God to read your Bible, and then people look at you like you have three heads. It's like, what is wrong with you? Right. You think I'm crazy? You're crazy. Right. You're a lazy, sorry, good-for-nothing Christian. There are so many, you know, so many, so, much, so many things that God did for us that you could never pay back to him. Yeah, and losing two to three hours of sleep at night, that's real bad, isn't it? Yeah. That's terrible. You know, I just have to get my eight in. i got to get a tight 12 in, like Brother Josh will say. He's kidding, of course, right? <laughs> got to get a tight 12 in. I'm not convinced that you have to get eight hours of sleep every night. I've said this numerous times. I said this a few years ago to Brother Rick. And part of it's because I never get eight hours of sleep. And I function just fine. I sleep on average six hours a night. 
And every night my wife falls asleep and I'm awake. Every single night. I wake up earlier than she does. I literally, when I was working on those rooms at the house, I am not exaggerating. I stayed up probably five nights in a row working till about 3.30. The rooms that I remodeled at my, at my father's house. I stayed up till probably 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning and then went to work the next day. For like five days in a row I did that. Just, you know, I just had a passion for that at the time. Would to God people would get a passion for God and just stay up till 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning for just a couple of nights and read the Bible. Right. Just, just fall in love with the Bible again. Mm-hmm. You know, revive your spirit, revive your soul, and just show God how much you love him and sacrifice some time for him. Amen. You know, I mean, you know, we should be a living sacrifice like it talks about in Romans chapter number 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God. Your life should just be constantly sacrificing. But for the, I beseech you by the mercies of God. All that God did for you, all that Christ did for you, that's the very least. You know what it says in verse 2? Your reasonable service. That's your, re- it's your reasonable service to stay up late praying. To stay up late reading your Bible. To stay out a little bit longer and go a little further and knock a few more doors. To sacrifice a little bit of sleep. Oh man, I'm just going to... I'm not... I mean, just think of how ridiculous it sounds. You know, but i got to get home at this particular time or I'm not going to get my eight hours. That sounds... I don't know about... When, if, you, if that sounds normal to you, that sounds ridiculous to me. Amen. i got to make sure I get those eight hours of sleep. That's, that's ridiculous. I'm not convinced that, I think, I'll tell you my personal experience of sleeping, I think what's more important, and I've seen sleep studies that actually back this up, because I've looked this up a lot, that it's more important that you get the same amount of sleep every night. That that's more important than it is that you get eight hours, like a specific amount of time, that if you're going to sleep, you know, uh, seven hours, then you sleep seven hours every night. If you're going to, because you know what, and I'll tell you why that makes sense too, to me, is you know, who gets up at a certain time every day? What time? Somebody just throw something out at me. 4.30. Okay. If you don't set an alarm, what time do you usually wake up? 4.30. Four, exactly. You understand my point? When you put your body into a routine, do you know what happens? You just wake up at that time anyway. So do you know what your body does? It's used to going to bed at a certain hour. It's used to waking up at a certain hour. You know what you're doing? You're shaking your body all up when you're not going to sleep and waking up at the same time. I'm more convinced that what actually is beneficial to the human body is sleeping the same hours at the same, and going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time. And I don't think that it matters as much the amount of hours <clears throat> that you get to sleep. But even still, just like food is important, sleep is important, but sometimes you need to sacrifice food. You need to sacrifice sleep. You need to sacrifice time for God. And that's what we need to do. We need to not be slothful and lazy and sluggardly. We need to love not sleep. It shouldn't be something that that's man. That's what's real important to me. If I gave you a list of the ten, I've heard people say things like this. My, let me tell you my, you know, five most favorite things to do. You know, and they'll say, I like to do this, I like to do that, and I like to sleep. That's ridiculous. That is embarrassing and ridiculous. And if that's you, you need to change. Because it's not biblical. It's not biblical. You should not love sleep. Slothful and lazy people love sleep. And you'll just fall into this just deeper, you know, just, 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 just this downward spiral of laziness is what you'll do. Don't love sleep. Sacrifice time for God. Choose a night this week. This week, pick a night and say, you know what, that'd be the perfect night. I'm going to sacrifice a few hours. I normally go to sleep at 1030. I'm going to stay up till 1 in the morning. Read my Bible. Amen. Seriously. Amen. I'm not kidding with you. You know, Put these things into practice. I'm going to stay up on Thursday night until 2 in the morning reading my Bible and praying. Jesus stayed up all night. Paul, it's it just real casually. He's preaching till midnight. Some child dies. He's like, he goes down there. He heals him, brings him back to life. He's like, who's hungry? They all gather around. They all eat. They fellowship. They speak. They talk for a long time in fellowship. And he's like... I gotta go, I got somewhere else to be. And just leaves. Just starts traveling. You know, this is you know, a, a great Christian's behavior. 
I want to try to mimic the great men of God. I don't want to just try to do the least amount that I, that I can. I want to look in the Bible, and I want to mimic the great men of God. I want to be like Abraham and rise up early in the morning. I don't want to be slothful and lazy, turning on my bed, being ashamed to God, just you know, falling in love with my sleep. I want to rise up early in the morning, and I want to show God that I love him by sacrificing time for him. I want to sacrifice sleep for him. I want to sacrifice things for him. I want to show God that I love him, and I want to spend time with him in prayer. Amen. Late at night, meditating upon God's word, making vows that I'm going to do that, and I'm not going to sleep until I finish it. You know, you have the, uh, the, the, the Jews that vowed that they weren't going to eat anything until they killed Paul. Right? You have these people in false religions doing more than thinking Christians who have the truth are doing. Right. You know? These, these, the, all these Buddhists, and they're, 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 they're doing all these different things where they're tormenting themselves, right? And Christians are like, i got to get my eight hours a night. <laughs> got to make sure that I get a tight eight in the night. Sleep at ten, up at whatever, right? It's ridiculous. It's a Christian, listen to me, this is not just my opinion. It is a Christian characteristic to not love sleep. That is a virtue of Christianity, to not love sleep. Amen. We should not love sleep, and we should sacrifice our sleep for the Lord. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, dear Lord, for your great example, showing us that, it, that, it, that it's, you know, what's more important, dear Lord, having your priorities straight, of course, is being the perfect example for us. And, uh, and sacrificing the sleep and, and uh, subjecting uh, the flesh, dear Lord, and walking after the Spirit. We thank you for the example that you set for us. Help us, dear Lord God, <clears throat> in times of struggle, in times of weariness, that we could uh, put our body into subjection, dear Lord, and we could do things that are profitable, things that are spiritual, things that affect eternity. Just be with us and protect us, bless our church, and help us to do that which is right and is pleasing in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.